We've come a long way, my friend. Hey guys, it's you from the F Word, here to just talk about God of War. I'm not really going to do a review. It's already been out for a bit. There have already been reviews. The reviews are amazing. And the, the game is totally worth the scores that it's getting. It's, at the, it's great. And I am so happy that they brought Kratos back. And we've got a very different Kratos here. There's some spoilers in here for sure. But to give you a bit of a backstory, I've played every single God of War iteration in every single difficulty, except for Ghost of Sparta and Chains of Olympus. I've played them, and i played them on medium and hard. But the first three I played on every single one. I even went back and played it on easy just so I can rip more shit all over the place. For those of you who have played the original God of War and are even questioning the thought, oh, should I get it? Go and buy this. You will be so happy. And the reason I say that is because this is one of those situations, very similar to like the talk you have with Infinity War. If you've seen all the movies leading up to Infinity War, you get 100% of the experience. If you've played all the games, specifically 1, 2, and 3, you get 100% of the experience in this game. The story is the best part of this. Kratos is still Kratos. He's still a badass, but he's a very different badass. He is a father who's lost his wife, trying to deal with a son who's lost his mother. And he's uh, kind of estranged with his son. Remember, he had a wife and daughter. He killed them off because of Ares and his own bloodlust. And his path of vengeance has led to something a lot different. And the way that the story is told in this is a lot slower, which is also indicative of the type of combat we have which is a lot more methodical and a lot slower not like the previous god of wars which was button mashing you cannot do that here and the parallels between that and how they were able to showcase that in both the battles and with the story was just so masterfully done and for a huge fan of the series i'm so so happy with this we got a lot of really good characters we got balder who's a stranger that comes a calling early on and we don't know who he is we learn about him slowly as the progression of the story goes we've got freya who is the witch of the woods we got brock and sindri who are the guys that help out with your armor and which is really cool because you can customize a lot of your armor now i'm not i didn't go for any of the big bulky stuff even though some of the stats were a lot better because i just like the way kratos looks with just that big chest thing i don't like him looking like he's got full-blown armor on this is it's my Kratos. Your Kratos can be different. The, the the enchantments you can add on to your armor was a lot, really cool thing. They added a good RPG level to it, which is awesome. Uh, the exploration in here is just a lot better than I expected. I Most of the games are quite linear once you go through one place. You don't necessarily go back unless you go to a sequence that takes you back. This allows you to explore and you can explore a lot of stuff, get into a lot of different things. You can escape dragons, you can fight Valkyries, which are legit hard battles. Even on medium, it was pretty hard, especially because I didn't focus on the gear upgrades because I was still thinking of the old God of War. When I go back and play it again, which I will, I get to look at it from a different way. It's like, you know, my gear is important my abilities with all my weapons are important and the combinations with those have to be slower i cannot button mash because i would button mash sometimes and i'd catch myself doing it and what would happen i would get punished all the side quests are really good and leads you to these really amazing and beautiful locations you've got you've got different caverns you've got different castles you've got a place that's a giant with a giant giant on there like it's just so crazy the world that they've created the lake of nine as it's like as a main character really is an incredible place and instead of it being you know three different parts this way it's three different parts this way so it's just really cool how they constructed that with the world tree and how every single time you're like well how do i get to this point just you it's that cool little balance of progressing further into the story to be able to unlock more stuff and it does it in such a cool way and again exploring is important because you want resources resources get you better gear better gear help you out later on especially if you're going to go into the harder harder levels because once you go back to an area you think you've cleared, the bosses come back and they're a lot harder. Like you could be a level five. I've run into le like I was a level five at one point and I was up to against level eights and I was like, well, there's no way I can beat these guys. But at least you can always go back to them. And it's just great exploring this beautiful world, these different caverns, these different castles, all sorts of stuff. The battles are really cool. It's not as gruesome as the original games, but I think that also speaks to the style of battle and the style of, of Kratos that we have here. Again, a man trying to be a father again, who's estranged from his son, and he doesn't really know him very well, and a son trying to just make his dad proud, at least be accepted by him. He doesn't know that he's a god. Kratos hasn't told him that. And so it's a really interesting dynamic, and it 
is really cool how they wrote Kratos to really try to ride that balance between telling his son or what he really wants to tell him because his son's looking at his dad doing these incredible things. He's like, how did you do that? He's like, it's okay. Like this was, it was very difficult. I'm very tired. I'm this, I'm that. It's, it's very well paced and really, really awesome to watch, especially when you know Kratos. There's one part in particular that harkens back to his past and it's just, it's got so much weight to it because of what happened, because of how we left off with Kratos. And the whole story has that much more weight because of it, as I mentioned earlier. So the story progresses with that. And we watch Atreus grow as a person, uh, as somebody who's, you know, young, naive, wanting to make a good example, who his, you know, Kratos married a woman who was a good warrior. We have that in the story. And you can see that in Atreus. And obviously he's a huge help as a tank anyways. Like having him there was a lot better than I thought initially. And once I started cluing in, I'm like, no, use him more often. Hit that square as much as you can to get him to shoot those arrows. Because I was getting beat up quite a bit. It is a lot of different of a game. And again, button mashing is out of the question. But then when we watch Atreus go from that to kind of a pissed off kid because Kratos kind of lets him down a lot in this to because he thinks what he's doing is more important than what Atreus is asking. And then when he finally learns he's a god, you can see that turn and where he's walking around all super cocky and Kratos is trying to show him that you need to be better than me. And it, there are some really great, great moments between the two of them that really hit hard for me because of the character that I know of Kratos and how different he is. Let's talk about that axe. That axe the dough. Oh my god. If you've ever, ever wanted to ever feel like Thor, you buy this game just for that. The amount of times I just threw that axe out into water, into whatever to call it back, is just the funnest ever. It never gets old. And to use it in battle, and the moments where like you get really good, and you're able to string together a throw with a catch and a hit at the same time, and the combos and skills that you're able to get from like your experience, because you don't really have coin, you just have experience that you can build up your, your skills... It's just so awesome and so satisfying. Uh, the battles are satisfying alone, but when you throw that axe and it comes down and you can do like a, a slam down with it and it's a whole sequence, it's so great. And a lot of it has to do with the way that the camera is because it's more over the shoulder. You're in with the battle. You can't see what's behind you a lot. They've got the indicators, which I think you could turn off, but you don't know what's around you the entire time. So no, you can't just whip stuff around. You have to know what's behind you. You have to dodge. You have to parry a lot. And it's much better to parry because you could throw that axe, start punching fools, grab it back, do another combo. And then when you get your other weapon, it's even better because you can string all three together, one after the other after the other. The talismans are really cool too. I went with one that slowed down time. There is the one that slows down time is is key because a it sets up some amazing combos but b it really really helps when you're in a bind because especially when you're fighting the valkyries which is awesome uh you're gonna need something like that slow down the people especially in Muspelheim, one of the realms because that's another thing going to realms is awesome they show you you can go to the bifrost you see that little tower thing in the center and you can just go to the different bridges go to the realms and they all have something different the best armor is in nilfheim remember that nilfheim is a grind but it's awesome but going to alfheim Muspelheim, which is another one um helheim which is another one as well is great and then eventually you get to a place called jordanheim which i won't say because i really want you to play this game but i cannot speak about this axe enough i tell all my friends about it guess what i did i threw an axe and i called it back they're like i know dude i'm like yeah but you don't understand and i showed anthony who's part of our little f word crew for those of you who don't know and now he's all like that thing's badass i'm like i told you so yeah the axe is the best thing ever the other characters in here are really great and it adds to it you've got the sons of thor which really teases another game because there is going to be another game and Mimir. Mimir is one of those characters that you'd think would be like a Jar Jar Binks, but he's not. He is extremely helpful because Norse mythology has so much to it, and he's able to sh like tell us about the intricacies of the gods, of their history, about Ragnarok, which Ragnarok is a heavy thing in this, so that kind of teases stuff for the next game. Um, his relationship with Odin, how Odin is, not the Anthony Hopkins nice Odin. We're talking about a real dick here, like 
real dick. Same with Thor. Not a good guy. But Mir is a really, really interesting character and it really helps because again, you could pick up so much lore in this and they have like a, a, a menu system very similar to The Witcher 3 where you got the you got the hints on how to defeat certain enemies as you defeat them. Atreus adds that into his little journal. You have resources, you have all that other stuff and then you've got the lore and I would say please take a look at it. It's really cool because they've got some really cool lore in there. The history of a lot of these gods, which knowing the God of War crew in Santa Monica Studios, they do a great job of this. It's kind of like an Assassin's Creed where you go to certain areas and they have a marker of what's there, of what the building actually is. And it's legit information. It's like, that's really cool. Uh, or in The Witcher. The lore in The Witcher is one of the best parts about it. The Witcher 3, oh, all The Witcher games. And so they've incorporated that in this to give you a much more richer story overall and again that rpg element i cannot get enough of this game it was so much fun i spent hours and hours just going to different areas exploring as much as i can explore fighting as much as i can to use that axe all the time because all i want to do is throw it at fools and call it back or throw it at fools and call it back mid combo to slam down while having the immigrant song playing it is a beautiful beautiful thing this game is a beautiful game and especially if you've played the previous ones the story and the relationship between the father and the son is just the best there is a little bit of a letdown for sure for me there's two um the f one of the final fights or the final fight is a little bit of a letdown when it ends i was like oh that was it i was kind of expecting more and i was wanting a little bit more and the other thing they show in the bifrost two or three locations i think it was two locations asgard being one of them and you can't go to them but i wish they would have incorporated something where you can at least go there as some of the realms don't get me wrong it's fun realm hopping and going to the other places but when you see that and you're like i really want to go there it definitely gets me excited for the next one i wanted to go but it was kind of like i was i was expecting to be able to go there because it was there in the Bifrost itself before I went. So that was another letdown. But other than that, it is about the characters. It is about Kratos himself and how he's grown as a person and how he's grown to be a father. And now he's got a son who has gotten a great character arc and it's just beautiful. And again, the marriage between the way that the story is structured and the way the pacing is with the way that the battles are paced is vastly different than the fast paced nature of the original ones. So you really get a feel for a grizzled older Kratos and that axe. So that's God of War, people. Go buy it. Go play it. Go love it. Go enjoy the hell out of it. And if you haven't played the original games, I implore you. Graphics do hold up to an extent. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit different. But 1, 2, and 3, you will not be disappointed, especially if you're a story-driven individual like myself. Please, please go get this. I love the hell out of this game. If I was going to rate it, which I don't rate things anymore, I would give this for sure a 9.5 out of 10 because that's just the first thing when I said it. Again, minor things aside, but with all the stuff that you can do and the fact that I can still go back now and play it again, and I'm going to play it again more because uh, I just can't get enough of that axe. Anyways, guys. Let me know what your thoughts are if you played God of War for PS4. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Are you excited for the next one? Tell me some theories. What do you think is going to go down for those of you who have played it? You can find me on Twitter at the F4G. You can email us at the F4Podcast at gmail.com. Make sure you're following Entertained Facts on Instagram. You can head over to Anchor or Apple Music or some other. I think we're on Radio Tune as well now where we release some audio stuff. And until next time, I'm G. And I am out. Boy.